Hello, today we are going to talk about how to install how to install KDE SRC minus build in order to develop for KDE the KDE community using Arch Linux. So this is a Arch Linux uh, virtual machine. I'm connected to it using X free RDP, which is the free RDP client which my hardware machine is Ubuntu 22.04. This is my virtual machine, Arch. It has KD installed on it. And let's do um, the usual steps in making a VM be able to build all of the software that is provided by the KD community. Okay, so first of all, what should we do in this VM? We have um, useless Chrome icons, etc. Let's remove them. So I don't use the software manager. I don't want the system settings pinned in here. I don't use Dolphin. Okay, I do use Firefox but only in private mode. Firefox does not look that great. It has too much Chrome. This space is useless. This is useless. I don't use Pocket. I don't need this head. Toolbars should never show bookmarks. Okay, what else? Settings the download it should always ask where to save new tabs should always use blank pages and this should be it okay first of all let's um, see what uh, developing for kd is like so what is the kd project and community So this thing, uppercase K, uppercase D, uppercase E. Okay, so the website is kd.org. It makes uh, 300 applications. And um, also this entire UI that you see here is made by KD is called KD Plasma. Desktop is the, develop, the desktop environment that the KD project makes for laptops and normal computers. There's other desktops such as Plasma big screen and for TVs and Plasma mobile for mobile phones. There used to be a Plasma desktop for uh, netbooks. Okay, so this is KD Plasma desktop. This is the start button. This is the start menu. There's three types of menus. You can choose from them. Currently, the menu used is application launcher. Okay, this is the taskbar. We I have the web browser that I use, which is Mozilla Firefox private window, it's pinned to the taskbar. This is what's called by, normally called a system tray. Okay, let's see if we can configure the lock screen. Do not close this often. lock screen automatically. Like this. Okay. Next. 
So this is the KD community, create software. This is some of the software that they create, which is KD Asma Desktop and other applications such as Arc, which is the archiver, Discover, which is the App Store, Dolphin, which is the file explorer, file manager, Info Center, Console, which is a terminal, KWrite, which is a text editor, Menu Editor, System Monitor for seeing your tasks, System Settings for Settings, and this is it. These are all of the applications that are installed currently on my computer. A minimal installation. Okay, so we went to kd.org, which is their official canonical website, and in there there's a big button which is called in the top menu called Get Involved. Let's look at it. What does it say? So it's uh, you can help the KD community in several ways, but we want to help in just one way, which is development. So we could do uh, try to see if uh, issues that are reported in the bug tracker can be reproduced by me. I don't want to do that. I could test various applications. If I find an issue, I add that issue to the issue reporter. I don't want to do that. I could uh, translate software into my native language. I don't want to do that. So what I want to do is development. It says, by becoming a developer in the KD community, you can affect people by writing and improving world-class software used by millions. Okay. You will learn C++. I'm a senior C++ developer. I learn Qt. I don't know Qt. I learn CMake. I don't know CMake. I know enough of Git. Okay. Find out about becoming a KD developer. Okay. It says there's mentoring programs, including an informal list of people who are willing to help newcomers get started. What is that? Informal mentoring. Several community members are happy to help newcomers involved in the community. Are they? Okay, good to know that such a thing exists if they have time and energy to mentor. Okay. While any operating system can be used to patch or develop for KD software, it's easiest if you use a Linux distribution. I use that, so it's Arch Linux, that provides a relatively res recent uh, versions of Qt and KD frameworks, which is true because Arch is a rolling release software is pretty up to date so i could use arch okay i'm not using windows or mac os or linux that ships all their software if so i should use a virtual machine okay using one of the distributions mentioned above Okay, it uses C++, Qt, KD frameworks. Okay, and then one time set up your development environment. So from what I know, most if not all of the software created by the KD community has a Git repository in here. HTTPS colon slash slash invent.kd.org there's some groups, 30 groups or something, and in there there's hundreds of Git repositories. So the most important one, the entry point is frameworks. There's a ton of 
repositories. And then uh, using these KD frameworks, so these are shared libraries, libraries used by more um, software Git repositories, software applications. On top of this and on top of Qt, the desktop environment plus the Windows shell plus the login manager plus all of the other applications are built. Okay. You need a development environment because um, in order to build, let's take an application such as a which one? This thing in order to build KAlgebra, you will also need Analyza, which is a library. And you will also need most of the KD frameworks. So what we want is a tool that fetches all of the Git repos needed, uh, uses the required Git branches, builds all of the Git repos in the correct order with the correct uh, build flags, using the correct um, build technology, so some projects are CMake, some others are QMake, others are something else. Um, GNU tools. And all of this source code is actually git cloned locally, so you can edit locally and then you can prepare merge requests towards the uh, towards these git repos which are on invent.kd.org. Okay, I know how to use the command line. Okay, so install basic tools. Let's put the documentation on the right half side of the screen. And uh, why isn't the console in here? Right click, add to favorites. Okay, let's look at the favorites list. So discover, no. Firefox, yes. Console, yes. Dolphin, system settings. It looks okay. So let's start the console. This is a bug. Okay, so my, use, my username, Linux username is administrator. Who am I? Um, this machine is uh, Arch Linux. Name minus A. Three. I have ten gigabytes of RAM. DF. I have uh, two hundred uh, gigabytes of hard disk. I have 15 CPU cores, so I have pretty much enough as uh, hardware resources. Okay, so I'm on Arch, I should Pacman S. Let's see if sudo works. So now I'm uh, root. How do I upgrade the Pacman uh, packages metadata? This. Okay, so this is the package metadata, the list of uh, packages that exist in the package repositories and their de uh, dependencies. So I went with you, which is also upgrade. So it says uh, 68 uh, packages are not up to date. Proceed with installation and the default value is uppercase Y, which means yes, so I can press enter. So now it will install 
all of the packages that can be upgraded. So the Linux kernel is 175 megabytes in size and compre uh, compressed. And Linux firmware is 150 megabytes compressed. Okay. So after uh, I have uh, updated the package metadata, so Pacman knows how to install packages. Then I have up, I'm upgrading all of the packages that can be upgraded. Import PGP key, yes. Um, is marginal trust is corrupted invalid signature. This is going to do something weird, right? No. Control C. Okay. So let's see what's this marginal integrity thing. Control TV. Okay, takes me to Reddit. Okay, so what did it say? One minus S, control shift to B. Yes. Reinstalling. Okay, one of these things that did not work, leap cup. Come on, minus S. Okay, so it seemed to work. Let's upgrade again, yes. Okay, so I'm guessing that packages are digitally signed and uh, there's various people which are owners of um, digital signatures, so you need to get their um, half of the digital signature on your machine in order to validate that uh, the packages that they signed are valid. Okay, now we should do a reboot because it has installed a new install a new Linux kernel, but we'll see if we can survive without a reboot. Okay. Next. So it says we should install these packages. Middle click to paste. Yes to enter. So it installed git. Okay. Next, let's keep this um, console, which is a terminal tab, open and um, have user root in the first tab. And in the second tab, we'll have the normal user, which is administrator in this case. Okay, let's see if git GUI works. Yes. 
Give it a yes. What else can we do? To configure our user. Copy, paste. My name. Okay, so username and um, user email. Okay, what else? There's a Git repo which is called KDSRC build in the SDK there, uh, group in invent.kd.org. Let's see how it looks like. Control C T V enter. Okay, so this is a Git repo. We're going to download it and uh, make it run. So these command lines are okay. Copy, paste. Okay, next. It says that I should run this thing. So it says I'm going to install packages using Pacman. It needs the super user password. So it's going to install 107 packages. A ton of Ruby packages. Will and protocols we will see. Perl modules. Riptar. Qt5 script. Okay, and it says that uh, has installed all of the packages that it could install using uh, Pacman. Now it's it has created a tilde slash dot config slash kdsrc build rc file and it will also update my dot bash rc because I'm in bash. Okay, let's look at it. Tilda slash bash rc. What did it do in my bash rc? So it uh, prepended. Uh, tilde slash kd slash src slash kdsrc minus build directory to my path and then it has an auto completion function which I've never used. So it's okay what it did. Now I will log in. Let's look at the path environment variable. So it's the normal environment variable with these directories plus prepended so at the start of the home directory it's uh, this directory which is where the git repo kdsrc minus build was checked out let's see how it looks like so it's a git repo and the important file in here is kdsrc minus build which is uh, an executable, so it has the X uh, permission, and it's a Perl script. So it starts with shebang slash vsr bin and Perl. So this can be run as is, and is executable. Okay, it has the X bit set in the permissions. So that's why we need to have um, this directory at the start of the path in order for this executable to be available. Okay. And now we can uh, start using KDSRC. We'll need to look at the 
configuration file. So let's use Kate if I have it. No. No Kate for me. Batman. Minus S Kate. Yes. So I have console, CLang, text lab, Rust, Git, Mardon part, switch part. Okay, it looks okay. So I go Kate, Pilda, slash, config, uh, Kate insert builder C. I need to configure it the way I always configure it. So no Qt directory for me. I'm using the Qt that's uh, provided by Arch packages. Um, uh, all of the KD things I build myself, all of the cute things and things which are below cute or KD, I install from Arch packages. So the Git repos are going to be cloned in this directory, tilde slash KD slash SRC. Uh, the make install will install in this directory, tilde slash KD slash USR. The build directory for CMake will be tilde slash kd slash build and then the same directory structure as the one in the source directory. Okay, uh, build type I want debug. Okay, now I'm course the maximum, so I have uh, 17, let's go with that. And this does not matter because it's not used. Stop on failure, false, really important. Directory, lay, directory layout invent, really important. And then let's see what files are included. So common options, this does not really do anything and this includes a ton of things. Let's open this file. Control C, Control O, Control V, enter. So it includes uh, this file, this file, this file, this file, this file. And uh, this file is already included here. Okay. Let's look at the directory. So we want a crusader in here as fast as possible. Work one minus S. Seder. Yeah, so this is an orthodox file manager. Crusader. First run. It's okay. It's okay. Show splash in single instance. Save last position. Update default. Start to train. Panel. What is this? View. Make everything way smaller. Okay, how do I make things even smaller? Mars button. History button. Compact. Apply. Let's see how compact it, this thing it really is. Yeah, kind of huge. Okay, so now we have tabs. Uh, we don't need uh, these uh, function keys. So no FN. No main bar, no job bar, no action bar. Okay, what do we really need? No status bar, embedded terminal, command line, command line, send to embedded terminal emulator. Okay, kind of looks okay. -ish. Okay, so let's, now let's look at KDSRC. So there's a KD directory, in there there's an SRC directory, there's a KDSRC minus build directory. 
and this thing has this file kf5qt5 so kf means kd frameworks 5 qt5 means qt5 that's the version of qt library that we use and this just includes the rest of the files so it says frameworks build include So this says that uh, there's a module named taglib, which is on GitHub, which use CMake, the CMake. We should build the branch master and shared libraries. Okay. So there's module tags and module set tags. Module set are a container with many git repos and module is a git repo. Okay, it says that uh, k5 build support depends on kde src build, kd dev scripts, etc. So dependency order between this directory and these things which could be directories or modules. Directories being the module set. Okay, module set framework used to have a tag, it doesn't anymore, so it uses the branch master. Grant Lee from the GitHub branch master. Okay, so now we have a correctly config configured KDSRC build RC. We can start to test. KDSRC minus build, there's a version parameter, so it seems to work, it's on the path KDSRC build, manage KDSRC minus build, okay, it has found it in the correct place, now it says I should disable indexing antiviruses and other things that just slow the machine down. Okay, so search. Let's disable file search. I have never used file search. Wow, back. So it says that do you want to delete 25 megabytes? Yes. Okay. I can start building. So the first thing to build is one of the frameworks. So what's what's in the frameworks? So in here I just write frameworks. Okay, let's go with breeze icons, these guys. Breeze icons. Copy. And just the name of the executor, KDSRC build, and then the name of a git repo. KDSRC minus build, and then the name of a net git repo. So it um, has cloned KDSRC build. First, we did that manually, and then KDSRC build has started to git clone the, the rest of the repo. So the very first one is sysadmin repo metadata, which contains the list of dependencies, otherwise would not know what are the dependencies of Breeze icons. So it looked in sysadmin repo metadata and saw that Breeze icons is a git repo. It found its... Uh, that this is its git repo, so frame, slash framework slash breeze icons, and that it depends on this git repo extra CMake modules. So it has git cloned this git repo, git cloned this git repo, and built extra CMake modules first because that's the dependency, and then finally breeze icons. Okay, so we managed to uh, build 
the first two git repos and git clone for git repos. Let's look at what is in SRC right now. So in sysadmin we have repo metadata, this thing, sysadmin repo metadata, this is a git repo. And in kdsrc build was the thing that we cloned manually, so in vendor.kd.org slash sdk slash kdsrc minus build. And then two things both from frameworks. So inside of the uh, directory frameworks there's breeze icons, git repo and make git repos. So this is the structure that exists in uh, Invent, so invent.kd.org, there's a slash frameworks and slash breeze icons. Similarly, in tilde slash kd slash src slash frameworks slash breeze icons. So the directory structure for uh, git clones is the same as the structure that exists on invent.kd.org. Okay. The next step would be to build all of the frameworks. So we can go Frameworks. Why we can go frameworks? Because it's a module set which is defined, I'm guessing here. Okay, how do we search in Kate? So we want to search for uh, frameworks. in all open projects. Search. Okay, so there's a file which is called kf5 frameworks build includes. It should search matching the case. So there's a module set frameworks. So that's how it knew that frameworks exists and it knew how to build it. Okay. So this thing seems to be built fast enough, so it's using more than one core. So we're at module 5 out of 87. If it builds 87 modules, then it successfully builds all of the git repos from this uh, project group. So invent.kd.org slash frameworks. Okay, so from now on, it's just a waiting game. We wait for uh, uh, two things. So either one module does not build, uh, and it's because we didn't install enough Arch Linux packages. So it's missing a dependency. Or a module does not build and the fault and there's a new bug into either kdsrc minus build or in uh, the metadata sysadmin repo metadata uh, git repo or there's a build issue in one of the git repo repositories. So those are kind of the options. Either we install a Arch Linux package or we add a bug to KDSRC build or to repo metadata or to one of the Git repos that did build correctly two days ago but now does not build correctly. So it's a regression 
in uh, building that particular git repo. Okay, so okay, this RC minus run, then space, then the name of a module or of a module set. You can use uh, any name of the of a Git repo. So this thing, lowercase, the last part of the URL in a, a URL from inventkd.org. So anything. Any Git repo that's in here, you can build it because it knows how to build it because there's a repo metadata. Things which are not on event can be built, at least 40 of them, because they are defined in KDSRC build. So some modules are defined directly in here in KDSRC build, such as taglib and what else? Lib JPG error, JPG ME, Poplar, etc. But this file custom Qt libs build include is only if you either download Qt from uh, the Qt uh, website put it in a directory and then you say please only use Qt from this directory so then you will have a Qt install from Arch packages, a Qt from that directory and then you will want KDSRC to ignore the Qt that's installed on with via Arch packages you will want to install to use Qt just from that directory but then you will need to rebuild all of the modules which are which depend on Qt, but are not KDE modules, which are then used by uh, KDE, such as a module, such a module is um, lib accounts Qt, for instance. At, and this depends on lib accounts glib, glib. Okay, this is a Qt project. But this is not the case. So right now we're using, we're building only the KD uh, modules from scratch. So KDSRC should build all of the KD things, the cute things we take from Arch packages, the uh, dependencies which are below cute or KD, and are neither cute nor KD. We take them from the, and including cute, yeah. So everything that's not KD we take from the Arch packages. Okay. So this will build K wallet. After all of the frameworks are built, we can start building two things, either just one Git repo, such as a simple application like Dolphin or Kcalc or Ocular, or we can build everything. In order to build everything, the command line is kdsrc minus build with zero parameters. Okay. In order to rebuild a single project again and again and again, there's the option to not uh, git clone, git patch, git rebase, git something again by using no src, git stash on what's on there. Uh, no include dependencies to not build all of the dependencies, just, just this git repo that you give as parameter and then as parameter the name of the git repo to build. If the build has failed in some way and you need to run 
the configure step again. Uh, the way to do it is either to delete the corresponding build directory. So for frameworks, Attica would be this. You go into tilde slash kd slash build slash framework slash Attica, you delete this directory and then you build Attica again. Or if not, there's a refresh build command line parameter to kd src build, which does kind of the same. If you have 200 uh, modules to build and you've built 100, you've built half of them, then you have the option to build the rest by stating resume from the name of the last module where you control C to stop the compile or where the compilation failed. So it will build that module and then the rest starting from that module including. Okay, and when everything is done, you have an application built, you go cd and then tilde slash kd slash build the name of that uh, git repo. So in the build directory, not in the src directory. And you go source the prefix file, this will configure a number of environment variables correctly such that when you test, when you start the application, the application will be, in, such as kcalc application, will be in path environment variable. It will find its uh, KD uh, dependencies, libraries, package configs, QML files, resources, etc. in the tilde slash KD slash USR directory not uh, in slash usr where um, so we don't want to use kd uh, packages from arch we want to use all of that is kd things all of the kd things should come from tilde slash kd slash usr such as libraries cmake files package configs everything everything executables, everything. Okay, so now it's at uh, module 38 out of 87. If I want to break the, to stop the KDSRC minus build, I go control C, it is packed by control C it now I can choose for instance an execute uh, an application such as kcalc but then it will still build all of the frameworks because most of the applications are uh, marked to depend on most KD frameworks even if it's not the case even if an executable depends on just four frame KD frameworks. Sometimes the building that application will build all of the frameworks and then that application. I don't know exactly what's when it builds all of the frameworks and when only the needed ones. Okay. So that's for building, for running, again, you do you change to the build directory of that git repo, source, and then run the executable that you want. Where is it? And here you go, source, the prefix file, and then you run the executable from tilde slash kd slash usr slash bin slash dolphin. Okay. What else you can do is you can uh, develop. I know how to do that using Qt um, Creator. Okay. So Qt Creator for Arch was built with Qt6. Does not really matter. 
does not even matter if it's a Qt application or not. We're using Qt Creator as an ID, an integrated development environment. We're not Q, uh, Qt Creator will not use any of the files from tilde slash kd slash usr. Okay. So we can go for instance to SRC. Let's find a framework that has an executable. USR bin. Solid hardware. So let's go with solid. SRC frameworks solid. This thing. Okay. We copy this directory. Control C. We start Qt Creator. Okay. Um, to the use of Silangt was disabled. Enable anyway. Would you like to take a quick tour? Do not show again. File, open file or project. We paste in here and then we search the CMake lists. Okay. We manage kits. There's only the default one, which is the GCC installed by Arch from Arch packages in slash as bin slash GCC. Why? Why not in slash bin slash GCC? Interesting. Okay. Maybe slash USR slash bin was merged. Okay. And Qt also from uh, the Arch packages. So it's okay. Qt to Qt GCC C make everything is from uh, Arch packages. Just the KD things are not from Arch packages. Okay. And now this is the source code of uh, the Git repo solid. Let's go to the build directory. KD build frameworks solid this guy and we tell control C we tell Qt creator that yes these are the source code of solid but then why didn't it load project And then we import an existing build, which is the build directory, not the SRC directory, as is the directory. Choose. Okay. So now it says it has run the configure step. So CMake minus S, the correct directory of the source. The build directory is the build directory. And uh, Uh, runtime have op packages have been found, optional packages have been found, required have been found, uh, disabled the Qt documentation, which is okay. So the configure step has worked correctly. It's configured to build into tilde slash kd slash usr to use. Uh, extra CMake modules from tilde slash kd slash usr slash shell slash ecm slash cmake. It has found CLANG format. All of the cute things from slash, which is wrong, should be from slash usr slash lib64. Okay. And now we can choose the target, which will be solid hardware five. 
Oh, let's go to edit. And let's find the source code for um, this target, which is solid hardware 5. Tools, solid hardware, this thing. This thing, source files, solid hardware. Let's find the main uh, entry point. This guy. Let's put a brick one. So I. Uh, these are two combo boxes, one for files, another one for methods functions. So I search for uh, main with no namespace, no nothing. So this is the entry point because uh, solid hardware 5 is an executable. It, it has a main function. I put a breakpoint in here. And because uh, solid hardware was built using the debug configuration, and in here we have debug2. In projects we have the debug2 build configuration. So we can both uh, build this build configuration, which is solid build2, solid hardware2. We can run it, and it says that I didn't provide any command line parameter. It's a command line executable, so it gave me the usage information. Okay, so I could go solid hardware 5 space list if I wanted to. But now I can debug. So press the start debugging of startup project button. Okay, and it stopped at the first possible spot, which is at the open brace of uh, open curly bracket, bracket of uh, int main, the entry point function of the executable. So it has uh, one arc C one arc v which is position zero which is the name of the executable that started the process so it's hardware five from the correct directory okay and now we can go um, step over f10 step into f11 step out shift f11 so let's go f10 step into the solid hardware constructor so it's stepped into the correct place. We're inside of the H file solid minus hardware dot H. We can go at F11 to step inside of the Q string constructor. So for cute things, we only have headers. We don't have SRC files. So we can go F10. We're back into solid, which for which we have both CPP files and H files. So F10, F11. So why is step into qstring.h? Because we're at this place where up name needs to be passed as a parameter to set application name. So app name, I don't know what it is. It's a uh, static const char pointer. So it's a char pointer and const char pointer and needs to be converted to a Q string because I'm guessing that uh, this method set application name of the solid hardware um, class request requires a Q string, which is the const q string reference. So q string is the default uh, string type in uh, Qt. Okay. So f10. We're out of Qt, but also out of set application name. f11. f10, f11. f10. So I don't know how to step into this thing. 
right click on it, switch header source, does not work. So we need QCore application, that's the problem. Okay, so we don't have the source code to QCore application, which is part of Qt. We have only H files for Qt because we install it using uh, install Qt using uh, uh, distribution packages, so packages from Arch Linux. That's the advantage of building Qt yourself using uh, KDSRC build, because when you debug, you also have the CPP files for Qt, not just the H files. Okay. So this is again a cute class, we're not going to be able to step into it correctly, just in the H file, not in the CPP file. Q command line options. Okay. And it says if count less than one, which is correct, is zero, then it shows me the usage, which is show help of one. which again parser is uh, a Qt class, Q command line parser, so we can't really step into clear positional arguments. So let's see what it says, the application output. So it says I probably want list details. Okay, how do we do that? How do we pass parameters to applications in the debugger? I know. Let's stop the debugger first. It stopped. Okay, the application has exited. The debug parameter. I know how to do that, but I know how to edit the source code. Or not. I don't know how to do that either. Let's learn. <laughs> okay, that's a classic problem in KD. The corners are not okay. So there should be nothing in here and the corners should be outer 15%. Okay. Because I wanted to put this thing on half of my screen, not on a quarter of my screen. Okay. Let's put the documentation on the right off of the screen and let's see Qt creator debugger command line parameters. How do we do that? Yeah great. New private window Qt creator Debugger command line parameters. Okay. How to set it? Go to projects just under debug. Projects just under debug. Just under debug. Where I is just. No, debug. Where is debug projects? To the version ID, I select my this 
next guy. My nice case. By selecting the kit, you click tab called running. Running. Right under the bug. What's the bug? This thing. Go to tab called projects. Projects just under debug this guy. Okay. Then what? Now we have to choose the kit with your cute version. A tab running. Select the kit and select running. Not this one, this one. Run. Okay, so not a build, but run. A label with your executable path arguments to pass and working directory. Okay, so this was, I was inside of build and now I should be inside of run. So run configuration solid hardware 5, correct executable, and then we put the correct. Uh, parameters which are which application output no minus minus just list okay let's try that list details running terminal is that a option. Okay, let's see now. File save all, no need. Debug. And we're back. Okay, F10. How many arc C's? Should be three. Which are they? The name of the executable, list and details. Okay. Only cute things, cute things, cute things, cute, cute. Okay, if command is list, yes. Details, yes. Up HW list, so in here the executable stops, finishes. So we need to go F11 into this method. Okay, F11 goes into Q byte array. Okay, F11, Q byte array, F11, HW list. So, has two binary parameters interface is true and system true, false. Okay, harder list. F11, all devices. Manager backends F11 operator arrow of who um, Q global static F10 F11 okay we're inside manager backends so unfortunately F11 steps also inside of Qt, which it should not because I don't have the source code of Qt, I have just the headers, so that's, yeah, part of the source code of Qt is inside of the headers, such as templates and Latin string one or whatever is defined as a template or a uh, C++ template or a uh, macro. 
but the rest is inside of his CBV file, so it's kind of useless to me. Maybe it's just, it would be better to have an option to just jump into my own code or into the code that I have symbols for. So manager backends. Ensure manager created. Set local data F11. I pressed F11 three times, which probably means that the application is not paused. Threads, where are the threads? This guy just one thread. Okay, F11, device manager private, load backends, solid fake XML. So you can step into anything and really see what's doing because we have built uh, solid using uh, CMake build configuration debug, not real with the info. We can really step into correctly. No optimizations were applied. When we press F10, it will navigate from line 79 to line, eight, to line 80, not to line 54 and then to line 87. So it will not jump erratically over, all over the place when I go debugger step over. Everything is really easy to understand for a senior C++ developer. Even if I don't know Qt or the KDE code path. So we can navigate correctly using the debugger. We can start in the debugger the correct target. We can uh, run without debugging. We can debug, we can build, we can configure. Configure is in here. Build, run CMake. Okay. So it finished building KCalc. So now we can go stop the debugger close the project. Okay, we can now navigate to kcalc and see what it is. Utilities, kcalc, this is the build directory, control A, control C, file, open file or project, control V, we need to replace build with SRC, and then we need to select in there the CMake file. CM, CMake list TXT. Then we go to manage kits. We delete the previously added kit, remove, apply only desktop kit should remain. And now we go import existing build. We paste again. So KD build utilities K calc choose. Okay, let's select uh, a build configuration debug to is correct. K calc is correct. So K calc is a GUI application. Let's find its source code, kcalc, kcalc, um, there is the entry point source code, kcalc.cpp, let's search for a main thing. Main, here it is. Put a breakpoint in here, start the debugger by clicking on this button, the start debugging button. It uh, stops at the correct first place inside of main. F10 is a queue application. I don't have source code for it, CPP. So there's no reason to go F11, but inside of k-localized string I can step because this is a KD string was built using KDSRC. I have CPP files for it. I have built it with CMake configuration debug. So everything is aligned for me to see the correct CPP file loaded. So from slash KD slash SRC slash framework slash KI18N, not from slash KD slash SRC slash utility slash KCALC. So it knows how to navigate to the correct CPP file. Um, private, yes. 
this is a cute thing a cute thing f11 f10 f11 i'm still in cute land i do not want to be in cute land at all okay now i'm back in kd land f11 f11 i don't know why q what q global static macro does because somehow it doesn't show me the source code of the macros expanded macros okay i can f11 a while in there i mean the constructor of k localized string private statics a ton of uh, kd classes have a private class which is named private which contains data so it's kind of like a data struct or a DTO, data transfer object. Okay, catalogs, QHash, this is a hash map. Languages, QString list, our domain, which is a QByte array. Application domain, QByte array, QString list. So the constructor is setting all of the members and the reason for k localized string private statics class I'm guessing is to just have uh, data members of fields which are probably static in the sense of global not in the sense of C++ static Okay, shift 11 to step out, another shift 11, another shift 11. Now we're back in key localized string set application domain, shift 11 to navigate from this uh, place in the core stack to the parent, which is the main. So from level one to level two, shift 11. We're back in the entry point function, which is the function main. Upset attribute is a cute thing. KD libs for config migrator, we can step into it. F11, we're in the KD land, we don't, we're in the cute land, still in the cute land. It jumped into the wrong place, should jump inside of the constructor of the KD libs for config migrator. F11, F11, I'm still not where I should be. Still in cute land, the cute land is huge. I want to be in KD land. I mean, GLibc. <laughs> oh wow, cute land. And I don't want to be in cute land. F11. F11. Does F11 really work? Apparently not. So it should jump in here when I go F11, not inside of all of the things that happen when the parameters of this method are evaluated. Okay, so now if we just allow it to run, which means uh, F5, so debug, continue, not step, but continue without any breakpoints or stepping. It will load a ton of DLLs and start the GUI application, which is kick out. So this is the application, which is now debugged by Qt Creator. I can see the output of the application somewhere. I don't know where. Probably here. So. Maybe it didn't, didn't write anything to STD out. Okay. I can stop the debugging session. It will close the child application. We can go build to see if there are any build issues. Build 
lapse time zero, kind of fast. That's kind of fast. Let's go rebuild. Okay, what about CMake? And what about build? It still went way too fast. Okay, so I didn't find any build issues, compile issue. What uh, tools do we have? Um, where are the plugins? So we have Silang. We have uh, CPP check. Velgrind. We don't have uh, Clazy and uh, uh, Clang tidy. What does Clang format do? We start now. Uh, let's see if it remembers the build configuration. Hopefully so. Let's see what C-Lang, Tidy, and Clazy do. Cool. So although other is null, I know what. So the, if the condition is false, which condition? Oh, like this power of dynamic cast. Okay. Number. Okay, there's a possibility, says, who says, Silang analyzer, that. Uh, other is null. So when it uh, goes other than the value, it will do a null pointer ref reference exception. Non pod static. And documentation for those, right click, web page. Okay, what are the tools? CPP check. Unmodified C -Lang. So this is a not a recommended way to build Qt Creator. That's used by the Arch. Okay, what did CPP check do? There's no CPP check, right? CPP check. Yes. Okay, let's do CPP check again. Okay, and this is the output from CPP check. It says, why do you initialize the member variable last number underscore in the constructor body instead of doing it in an initializer in the initialization list? Yeah. There is a struct which has zero usages. Don't use QSwap, use STD swap. Both sides of slash. Inf on inf. Infinity on infinity is not a number. 
Okay, so that was it. We had a uh, Arch Linux uh, VM created from scratch, and in there uh, we had KDE installed, and then we installed all of the dependencies to make uh, KDSRC build. We have learned what KDSRC is, and that's because uh, that's the way the Qt community says to build uh, their uh, Git repos. We've installed Qt Creator. We know how to build all of the modules, like this. KDSRC build, no parameters. So 400 almost packages to uh, Git repos to build. Or how to build just one of the packages. You give it the name, such as kcalc, like this, and we'll build everything, including dependencies. I have instructed KDSRC to build using CMake uh, build configuration debug. So everything, all of the CPP files from the KD things are available in debugger in Qt Creator. I have shown how to load a project uh, Git repo correctly in Qt Creator. So there's two steps, a two step process. Close uh, all projects and editors. So first you open the uh, source code. Ctrl C, Ctrl V. So this is not a source code, this is a CMake build directory, so I start C. And then you need to read the CMake list file. And then you go to projects, manage kits, delete anything else except desktop, and then import existing build, and then give it a directory where KDSRC minus build has built your um, repository, which is in a directory is called tilde slash kd slash build slash something. Just the name of the directory, choose. And now everything is correctly done. You have the code so the source code in here visible as projects or visible as file system, whichever you prefer. Projects means by uh, children of CMake uh, list files. And then uh, in uh, the debug, in the projects uh, tab, you have this debug uh, to build configuration, which is really important, the only one that you're going to use, with the correct build configuration, the correct build directory. You can go build um, run CMake to run CMake again. You can go press on the build project kcalc to build. Uh, don't go run or debug before selecting the correct things in here. So you should have the build configuration debug too. And run, you select one of the uh, targets which are executables or uh, tests. Yeah, with executables, it's easier to see your, your output. And then you can put a breakpoint anywhere. Um, Qt Creator will remember the breakpoints that you put previously. So you already have uh, breakpoints. Where is the breakpoints window? I don't know how to show it. They're probably in views, under views, but that's not accessible to me right now. So let's go to kcalc. So kcalc is what we selected as a, a CMake target. In there, there's UI files or RC files. So these are things which uh, Qt uh, will uh, use generators on. And generate C++ code from and from there uh, GCC will compile everything. So this, the entry point is under source files, the name of the executable in this case kcalc.cpp and in here I select the main function in this huge comma box with all of the methods. Okay I put a breakpoint 
and I can I can run without debugging or uh, start debugging and stop at the first line of the main function. Thank you.